Hey everyone, David here. It's day 150, so we come to our last psalm today. Now some of you may have noticed that I'm standing in, in one of our corporate places of worship, and it just doesn't feel the same without all of you being in here and making much of who God is and, and what he's done for us. And that's what Psalm 150 is about, that God doesn't just deserve our praise in our churches, but he deserves our praise throughout the world and even the entire universe. That's why 13 times in this short and memorable psalm, we are commanded to praise the Lord. Now, some have called the entire book of Psalms a book of praise, but if you've been with us through our devotionals, you know that some of these psalms deal with lament and sorrow and suffering and trouble. But I think it's very fitting that the book of Psalms ends with a psalm of praise. Why? Because in spite of all the hard and difficult things that life has for us, we know how our story ends. We know how the story of the world ends, and it ends in praise of our Lord. So let's read Psalm 150. Let everything praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now commentators like Derek Kidner point out that this psalm goes from the where to the why to the how and then the who. Look down at verse 1. Where are we to worship God? Well, we're to praise God in his sanctuary, in his mighty heavens. God's attributes, his character, who he is, is so clearly revealed in his heavenly sanctuary and the mighty heavens that all beings are called to praise him. The psalmist feels his worship is inadequate because he feels the weight of God's glory and he is calling on creatures on earth and in heaven to praise him. Now that can sound strange, but we do this a lot, even in our doxology, right? We say, praise him above ye heavenly host. We're calling on angelic beings to join us in our praise of God. So where are we to worship him? In his sanctuary, in his mighty heavens, everywhere. Now, why are we to worship him? Look at verse 2. We're to worship him because of his mighty deeds and his excellent greatness. Now, God has done so much uh, in the story of the world, but all of these things come to their fullness in Jesus who lived a perfect life, who died to pay for our imperfect life, and then he was raised from the grave so that we could be brought from death to life, so that our stories would end in praise. And worship is celebrating who God is and what he has done for us and what he is doing and what he will do for us one day. And then in verses 3 through 5, it tells us, how we are to praise the Lord. Well, we're to use every instrument. Notice he says trumpet, lute, harp, strings, pipes, and cymbals. But notice it also says to praise him, yes, Presbyterians, with dance. In other words, he deserves everything we have. Now, this may look different place to place and person to person, but our hearts are to be the same. We are to be so overflowing with adoration and thanksgiving that it results in us praising him with all that we have and all that we are. And then in verse 6, it tells us who is to praise the Lord. Who is to praise the Lord? Everything that has breath. We are hardwired for worship, to give praise to something. We are attracted to glory. But unfortunately, we must be commanded to praise the Lord because our hearts seek something to worship, to celebrate, to give us meaning and delight. And life on this side of eternity is one big worship war. Not over style, 
but the object of our worship. When we praise God, we are pulling our fallen hearts towards the only one who can satisfy our souls. William Guthrie, the famous Scottish preacher, said that about Christ. Less will not satisfy and more could not be desired. You and I were made to praise the Lord today and forever. And we hope that these Psalms devotionals have been able to assist you in doing that, not just on Sundays, but throughout the week.